statistics and excel wages data box plot or box and whiskers analysis get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor well actually these are just items that we picked from the youtube shopping affiliate program but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this, or ideally some combination between the two, giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might wanna come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You can go back to a prior presentation where we basically started this practice problem from a blank sheet using a blank sheet from there. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, pre-formatted cells within it, helping you focus in on the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started out with a blank sheet with just data on it and we're practice formatting the Excel worksheet as we go. Let's take a look at that example tab to see where we will be going. We started off with our data about wages we're imagining for a corporation or something like that. We sorted the wage data so we can get more information from it that way. Then we created our box and whisker chart which gives us a uh, kind of pictorial analysis of it. And now we want to kind of think about this box and whisker in more detail and plot out some of the components of the plot and whisker in an analytical type of format to get an idea of what is happening within it. Now notice we'll talk more about these uh, calculations later, uh, the, the average, the mean, the median, and so on. Right now, we, we just wanna do it kind of in relation to the image so we can kind of get a picture or see what the picture is basically telling us in a bit more detail. All right, let's go back on over to the blank tab. So what we have done thus far is we have created the, the data, we put it into our, uh, our and in, we inserted a table around the data so I can sort it. It's currently sorted from uh, the largest to the smallest. We then, in essence, basically just selected the data, went to insert, and in the histogram area, in the chart area, we added the box and whiskers. And then we did a little bit of formatting within the box and whiskers, and that's basically where we are at this point in time. So now we'll do some analysis of the box and whiskers. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna pull this out, put my cursor on it and just move it over to let's say like column G. Let's see if I can make it a little bit smaller and fit it uh, over here. 
and so I could probably move this in a bit it'd still be good eh, maybe not I don't know all right and so then I'm gonna make uh, so then let's make column B a little bit smaller now note when I start to actually do calculations I don't want to do something right next to the table because then it looks like it's part of the table Excel will get confused thinking that these two things are related so anytime you start to use a table to do calculations the common practice is make a skinny cell between the calculations and the table you're working with I'm gonna do that by putting my cursor between B and C so it looks like that and then I'm gonna just uh, uh, hold down the left click and bring that down so it's a skinny B a skinny B cell all right so then let's let's first take a look at the common calculation of the average or the mean calculation so this is you know probably the most famous calculation it's representing the X on the plot so in other words we're looking at this X it's represented right there we used the numbers to be able to see the numbers on the box and whiskers and you'll recall we did that by adding the the data so uh, you can add that we could say okay can we figure that amount so let's do it a couple different ways we could we can <laughs> let's do it a couple different ways I'm gonna hold down I'm gonna make C wide as well so I'm putting my cursor between C and D I'm holding down the left clip I'm gonna make it a little bit wider here so I'll make that a little bit wider and then let's say this is gonna be the manual uh, calculation so if I was gonna calculate the average manually I would just uh, I would just add all these up right and then divide by the number uh, by the number of them now if I don't if I was to count them I'd have to then number them I can see the numbers because I, I start with a two here if I wanted to number them I can add a column let's do that I'm gonna put my cursor on a and I want to put a column to the left of it so what I'm gonna do is select the entire thing there's nothing underneath it so I don't have to worry about messing anything up so I can select the entire column and then right click and insert now Excel will always insert to the left because that makes sense right otherwise you would never be able to insert something on this side you know so it's always going to insert to the left so I'm gonna say insert and it makes a column now if I type in here just just I'm gonna put you know numbers uh, and then enter then notice it didn't add it to the table so we'll have to so if we want it to be part of the table we'll have to add it to the table now maybe we don't want it as part of the table because maybe I just want a count of the cells no matter what I put in the table over here so I'll keep it as is I'm just gonna say one two I'm gonna select those two and now I'm gonna use uh, Excel's understanding that that's a pattern by selecting those two you got it you can't have just one you got to select two of them because the next thing you would expect is three right so what Excel so Excel can see that so I'm gonna put my cursor on what they call the fill handle left click on it that's that little square and then it, notice you could see that running total as I pull it down so you can see the running total and so if I was to count them I'd have 51 numbers right and so I can make this a little smaller if I if I want this centered I can go to the home tab and say the numbers maybe I want those centered be careful with centering numbers by the way because uh, you know obviously you want the decimals to line up but in this case I think we're okay to do that so if I was to do this like in a manual method what we would do is say I can use the sum function to sum up all this now to sum this up I could put my cursor right here so I have that drop down and notice that sums just that part I could put my cursor on that first one hold down control shift and the down arrow notice when I do that I'm way down here my formula is gone but I can still see the formula in the formula bar if I want to get back up to the formula if I just hit enter it'll take me back up to the formula but if I want to get back up top before entering enter without using the scroll button I can hold down control and then backspace not delete backspace right so there's our sum now if I don't close up the brackets on the sum the most famous formula by the way the sum function so this is you have to know the sum function then it'll close it up for me right it'll do that for me and then I can say well how many of these are there now I can see here that there are 51 but I can also use maybe a count function if I wanted to count it I could say equals the count 
and use Excel to do that. So there's a, a comment, and I'm gonna put brackets or you can click on it. So there's the count function and I'm just gonna say, just count these, right? Just count them. And now I'm just dragging down normally. Now, now I'm just gonna hit enter uh, and it'll bring me back up, right? If I just hit enter, then it brings me back up. If I double click on it, I can see the full formula. It closed up the brackets. So I'm just counting everything in there. That comes out to 51. If I divide the two out, our mathematical formula for the average uh, is this divided by this, and that gets us to that 71, 184, which is X on the square on, on this thing. Notice that this line here is, uh, is a different number. That's uh, the median, which we'll calculate too. Now, if I'm gonna combine that together, let's combine that together in one calculation now. So the manual calculation somewhat manual a little bit more manual so you could see what's going on if to calculate an average equals the sum i'm going to say it's the sum and then i'm going to put my cursor so i see that little drop down and i know that that puts the dancing ants around all the numbers i want and so i'm going to take that divided divided by the count so now i'm combining two two of these functions in one cell right divided by the count double click on it and then once again, I'm going to select right when I have that little arrow drop down and the dancing ants are around the numbers that I want. And so there's my formula. So that's one way that you can and notice when I hit entered, it say we found a typo because I didn't close up the brackets. So it's so usually you have to close up the brackets. If you don't, it'll do it for you still. You just say, OK, just close them up and it does it. So then if I was to use the formula for it. I know I'm, this is kind of confusing because that was a formula, but if I use the straightforward formula, it would just be equals the average. So equals the average, double click on that. And once again, I'll put my cursor right up top. So I hit that pointer drop down, dancing ants around the number and boom. So that's the easiest way to do it. Average, the mean, same thing. So we'll talk more about the manual calculation, the math later on these, but home tab, alignment let's indent it here so i'm going to make that a little indent so we could see you also oftentimes will put like a colon so that we could see that this is the data kind of related to it right now we want to talk about this bottom whisker which is being calculated at the 67 900 so here's the box these are the whiskers there's the bottom whisker the bottom whisker gets a little bit more complicated when you have the outliers which we will talk about later but for now we're going to say this is going to be in essence the minimum not including outliers uh and uh so and so it's the bottom so the bottom whisker so this represents the bottom whisker the minimum not including outliers so if we do that, if I was to do this manually, if I was say manual method, we would say, all right, well, the minimum number, if I sort this from top to bottom, is gonna be right here, right? I can even sort it the other way. I can say, let's sort it from, uh, from the lowest to highest, there's the minimum number. However, that's an outlier, right? That's an outlier, so we're gonna pick the one that's not the outlier, which is going to be then uh, this number. So that one, and that's where the 67, nine is here. Now, if you wanted to do that with a formula, then I can kind of mark out the outliers. I can say, well, this one's an outlier and we, we know that these two are outliers. So it's kind of the minimum of this middle bit down here, right? So, it's, so I can use the min function, one way we could do it, function. And I could say, this is gonna be equal to another function, the min. So a common, common function to try to find the smallest number in a set of data. And we can select that. And then I'm just gonna have to kind of pick the middle part here. So I'm gonna pick uh, this set of numbers. Now that min function uh, could get thrown off when we start to sort, uh, sort the data in a different format, but that's the general idea with the min function. In other words, you can see that if I sorted the data this way from Z to A, so now it's picking up that same range, even though uh, I adjusted, you know, the data. So you've got to be kind of a little bit careful there. If I if I sort it back and go from A to Z, so now we're back to that 67, 9. So going forward, I'm going to keep the data set, you know, sorted this way from smallest to highest here. So I'm going to select these two again. I'm going to go to 
uh, the home tab. We're going to go to alignment and indent again. So there's uh, the 67.9. So now we'll take a look at uh, core tile one, uh, excluding the median. So I'm going to say this is going to be Q1 excluding the median. See if I spelled that right. We'll go to let's go to the trusty spell checker. No, of course you didn't spell it right. Back to the home tab. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom of the box. So that's going to be the the uh, six uh, sixty nine seven. So we could do that uh, with a, a manual method or a formula uh, type of method as well. So if we're going to use a formula, let's actually do that first. I'll put it on the bottom though because that's what we did up top. So I'm going to say this is the uh, formula method formula. So we can use a function and then we'll try to analyze what the function is doing. So I'm going to say equals to get the function. This is going to be quartile. We'll type to start in typing quartile. We have uh, the quartile exc excluding the median is what that means. We'll talk about that shortly or including the median. Exclusion is the default. Uh, so that's what the box and whiskers is using. You could change the box and whiskers, by the way, to include the median if you so choose. But we're going to use the default here. There's our argument. And then I'm going to put my cursor up top and where we have that arrow again, selecting the entire data set. Now, notice there's one other kind of argument that we need. And we get to the next argument when there's more than one by selecting a comma. So now the next bit of information it needs to do this is the quartile first uh, median value or third quartile so i'm going to say first quartile is what we want then i want to close it up shift nine closing up the brackets to complete the function and enter we get the 69 7 there's the 69 uh, 7. so in order to kind of get that calculation let's first all go to the median and then we'll go back up and do the manual kind of calculation so let's also think about the median which we can also say is quartile 2 q2 and this is going to be the middle line of the box right so it's the middle line of the box which is that 79 uh, let's do that with a formula and do that one now there's a couple different different ways i could do formula for q2 or we can use the formula for just the, the median me for the median formula so if i use that same formula to look at quarter two for example equals uh quartile so here's our quartile function double clicking on its same function and then i'm putting my cursor on that arrow selecting the entire piece putting a comma to get to the second argument but this time we want argument two which says right here that it's the median value so i'm going to say number two close up shift nine and there we have our argument. So there's the 70,009. We can also calculate that with a formula using the median formula. Same kind of thing. Most pro most likely the, the formula most people will use uh, because uh, most people will call it the median, right? It's the, it's the median. So we're going to say double click on that form that function. And then this argument will once again be the data we need is the entire data set. And if I don't close this one up, I think we'll probably be okay. It'll close up the brackets. If I don't close up the brackets, there's the 70,009 again. So if we think about that, well, what is it doing? It's taking the middle number when we take uh, the median as opposed to the average, which is taking the whole thing and dividing by two. We'll talk more about those concepts later, but that's the general idea. If I count this data set, we counting it from one uh, to 51. If I say this equals 51 divided by two, the middle point is like 26, right? So 26, 70,900, 70,900. So let's make that green as the middle point, right? That's the middle point and we'll make that green. And then if I look from uh, number one down to number 25, not including the median, right? That's what it means by not excluding the median. Then I could say, well, that's court, that's quartile one. What's the middle point there? Well, there's 25 numbers. So we could say this is, you know, 25 divided by two is going to be, you know, 13, right? And we're going to say there's the 69, seven. 
So that's going to be that 69.7. Let's make that like orange or something. So that matches this one. And these two are uh, the yellow. So if I did a manual calculation of the quartile, that's what I would do, right? The manual calculation, boom, it's right there. And we'll make that orange too. And then if I did the manual calculation for the, for the median or quartile two, then we would just do what we just did, right? And say, well, there's, there it is. Why did I make it yellow? It should be green, should be green. Get your colors, get your color scheme to make sense. So you're going to confuse people. You'll get bad messages. Let's indent these. We're going to go into here, home tab, alignment, indent, and then I'll indent these home tab, uh, alignment and indent again. Okay, so now let's let's we can do uh, quartile three. That's going to be the seventy-two eight, the box, the top of the box. So we can get an idea what this box plot is doing. So this is going to be uh, Q three, excluding uh, the median, median. So this is the top of the box. So now we've got the top of the box, not the whisker, the top of the box. So we could do this with, let's do the formula down here. This is a uh, form, the formula method, where we're going to say this is going to be equal to the quartile, excluding again. And I'm going to select the entire thing and then tell it, I'm scrolling down, there it is. I'm going to say comma, the second bit, telling it now we want quartile three. Quartile three, or we could just type in a three or select number three, closing it up, shift uh, shift zero. You have to close it up when you have more complex formulas oftentimes or else you'll confuse Excel. Simple formulas, it'll often just add that bracket for you. So there's the 72.8, so there's the 72.8. Now clearly if you were going to count this, right, you would exclude the median. You would be counting, you know, uh, the numbers on the second quartile. So, and picking the middle number, which is going to be that 79. So, so which we said was 72.8. So, 72.8. So, again, you can kind of count them, you know, find the middle number, and there, and there we have it. So, I'm going to say this is going to be, let's make this blue. So, I'll make that blue. Let's make this blue, see if I can get that to work. And then the manual method would be simply that we we exclude the median and we count the numbers counting you know we can count from oh hold on a second we can count from you know one to whatever here right and then divide by two okay so we know that we get it we get it okay so there's that let's make that blue let's select these two and then indent uh home tab alignment indent all right, and now we're on the maximum, the top whisk whisker uh, uh, here. So we're going to say, okay, so then the max is uh, Q4, Q4 uh, 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 top whisker, or wait, let's just say max, max top whisker. Okay, now the top whisker here would be the maximum amount if there were no outliers, but we have these outliers, which we'll talk about in a second. So if I so if I was to do this on a manual method, we could say, okay, well, it, these two are outliers. So it's gonna be, that's the 74.2 uh, is gonna be it, right? So we're gonna say, all right, this should be equal to the 74.2 which is the, the 74 two. I could do that with my max formula for, or let's say formula, formula, this equals the max brackets, but I have to, I'm not going to include the outliers, right? I'm going to take the middle bit here. And then of course it'll take, it'll pick, pick that up. So, that, but just to note how that max formula works, because that's a common formula selecting these two, home tab uh, alignment and indent so now we're we're there and so now we're go into the uh the calculation of what does it mean 
to be an outlier. And this is kind of a heuristic kind of calculation that it, it kind of threw these threw these out here. When does it know to kind of throw these as a dot, you know, on the, on the outside? So to do that little heuristic calculation, which is kind of like a convention type of calculation, let's call this an in, we need to know the interquartile range, which we might call the uh, IQR, which is basically simply going to be calculated as uh, Q, uh, uh, it's going to be calculated as Q3 minus Q1 brackets. So I can calculate the interquartile range by taking Q3, this 72,800, minus Q1, which is uh, the 69,7, and that's going to give us that uh, 3,100. So then I can say, okay, well, the, the lower outlier, outlier limit is going to be a formula of Q1, uh, Q, it's going to be Q1 minus the uh, interquartile range times, I'm just going to put an X for time, times the 1.5. That's going to, in essence, the formula. And, that, and of course, these are the dots. These are the dots. So I'm going to say the lower limit limit is going to be if i do that formula equals i'm going to now i'm going to use our excel skills here so i'm going to scroll up to the q1 so q1 uh up top 69 7. notice i can see this happening in the formula bar and now i've got something in the formula but i can't see my actual cell so i could keep working from the formula bar most people like to see the formula so i'll scroll back down and see the formula you know within the cell and so i'm going to say minus i'm just typing in this formula and and putting in the data cells that we can represent for numbers when i can the brackets the iqr i'm going to replace that with 3100 but i'm not going to type it in there because i would like to as much as possible when using excel pick that up from my data source my data references so I'm going to be picking the 3,100, which is represented as cell E27, cell E27 times, which is the asterisk on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to manually type 1.5 because that's kind of a hard coded number. I'm going to close up the brackets. So now we've entered our formula Q, Q1 minus the interquartile range times a 1.5. So if I enter, that's going to give us our 6550. So basically, as a convention, any of our data that is over like around this line is going to be thought of basically as an outlier, right? And it's going to throw it out. It's going to throw it out into the out into the cold, way past even the whiskers, where there's no protection from from the mob or anything. The, the Twitter mob will get them out there, and then we're going to go. <laughs> it's it's horrifying. We're going to, let's do some indentation, home tab, uh, alignment and indent, and we'll indent this one too, home tab, alignment, indent. Now, if I do the same thing for the upper, so we'll say this is the upper outlier limit, it's going to be Q3, and this time plus, instead of minus brackets, the interquartile range times 1.5, and these again are, of course, the dots. So now we'll say this is the... Uh, we'll say this is the upper uh, limit, limit, and this is going to be equal to same kind of thing. We'll say Q3. So I'm going to say equals because it's a formula. I'm going to find Q3. There it is. Click on it. So that's cell E19, uh, which I could see in the formula bar, but most people like to see it down here, right? I like to see it in my actual cell, and then plus brackets. I have, uh, and notice, by the way, if you didn't put brackets around it, you'd probably be good, right? Because it's going to multiply before it adds. But I think it makes it a little bit clearer to have, you know, the brackets sometimes. And we're going to say the brackets, it's going to be the interquartile range. It's going to be this cell. So the 3,100 represented or shown in E27, E27. And then we're going to say times with the asterisk, hard coding 1.5. When I say hard coding, I mean just typing in. Uh, the number instead of referring to a cell in the data. So that's going to be our 77, 
450. So anything above the 77, you know, around here, right, or so, it's going to throw out again out into the cold, where, where, you know, uh, you know, it's not where you want to be. Let's just put it that way. I don't want to get too descriptive. I don't want to give anyone nightmares. But home tab, and then alignment and indent. Actually, those outliers are probably good for the salary purposes, but that it's still bad because they. Well, anyway, I don't know. I, I'm not going to get into it. But let's go ahead and add some blue now just to format our cells. Because usually I like to say that the data input for pieces are going to be blue, right? So I'm going to say I'll just put a blue box. I'm not going to put some blue over the stuff that I already have stuff in. So I'm going to highlight this stuff. And then I'm going to go into, uh, into the Home tab, Font, drop down, And I use this blue right there oftentimes for the data input because that's what the Excel is fun guy used to use. And so I follow the tradition. I think he switched over to green now, but I was doing blue for so long and I like the blue. It's soothing. It's soothing. The, the green makes me think about that worksheets before Excel, which gives me, which I don't find soothing. That, that, that's, a, that's scary. So then we're going to go down here. We can do the uh, same thing. I'll put some bracket. By the way, this is the border. So home tab font group borders. And now that blue is right there. Boom. I could put the blue right here. And then I'm going to add borders around the whole thing. Borderizing it. So notice I can select the whole thing by holding down control. And so I can select non-adjacent cells. But you have to be careful with the scroll button. Because remember, if you're holding down control and scrolling it'll lower the size of the screen. So you have to let go of control and then put the control back on. You have to let, you have to hold on to control uh, loosely, a loose hold of control, too much, uh, uh, too much control. When people are trying to hold on too tight, uh, then th that's when, uh, when problems happen. So then we're going to say this is going to be there. It's like, just relax, just relax, man. Let go of the control from time to when you scroll, you have to let go. Home tab, font group, and borders. Let's do a quick little uh, review and spelling. See if my spelling's okay. So there's a, a so now hopefully you have a general idea of how these box charts look, what these numbers mean on the box charts. Now again, we'll get into some of these calc uh, a few of these calculations more. We'll, we'll obviously we'll talk about the median and whatnot. Uh, a whole lot more. Uh, but next time we'll add to this and look at this one, a visualization of the data compared to uh, compared to like a, a, a histogram. So we'll add a histogram to it next time.